everybody. How are you guys doing? I am going to start with some nutmeg and what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint. This is our firecracker wheelbarrow. It's got a wheelbarrow with a lot of firecrackers on it and then it's got a gnome pushing it. And Miss Victoria actually made this uh, template for us and I'm going to be painting it today. And we do have these in the store available. Hope you guys are doing good. I'm gonna start out with some nutmeg here and I'm just gonna kind of slather on a lot of it and painting the sides of my wheelbarrow as I go. Y'all, before we know it, July 4th will be up on us. It's already, what, June the 5th? So we're kind of late on this one, so I'm trying to, I'll base coat it and then uh, I'll come on later on and I, I think it'll be later on tonight and I will uh, show you how to paint the whole thing. Hey Sarah, how are you? I'm glad you could join me. I am painting these um, firecracker wheelbarrow and it's got a gnome pushing it and it is super cute. And I'm gonna do some base coating on this thing. I thought, you know, I kind of laid around this afternoon and there really wasn't a whole lot to do. A little kind of laying around and it was kind of nice. But then y'all, it's kind of like after a while, okay, I've kind of got to get up. If I lay around all day, I won't sleep tonight. And I thought, well, we haven't done this live on this firecracker wheelbarrow. So I thought, let me hop on here, see if anybody want to come hang out with me. Hey, Debbie, Debbie, can I get you to share for me? You know, I don't have a share button anymore. I must've made Facebook mad. Y'all, I always hear about people going to Facebook jail. It's like, I don't, I don't, I don't, all I know is I don't want to go to any kind of jail, but uh, Facebook has not been real happy with me, I guess, because I don't have a share button anymore. And then I had some other buttons disappear, but then they showed up later. So who knows? And it's not even possible that it's operator error, y'all. That's not even possible. So, <laughs> so I'm going to paint my little wheelbarrow guy. I thought about doing this in reindeer brown, but I kind of like the idea of going the darker nutmeg color. We're going to see how this turns out, y'all. Of course, I've got my mop brush, and of course, I am just putting a lot of paint on here because I'm just base coating right now. And um, base coating, kind of the name of the game is getting a lot of paint on there and making sure you have some good coverage. So it won't take me long. I'll base coat this thing and we'll let it dry. I'll probably come back on an hour or so after that. I'm gonna kind of scoop. I guess I'm in jail too. You can't share either. What the heck, y'all? What the heck is going on? So it's not just me. So y'all, I called, um, I had a lady from Facebook contact me and ask me, would I be interested in her kind of giving me an education about how to run Facebook ads? I'm like, she's like, you know, it wouldn't cost you anything and you could learn some stuff and blah, 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 blah. Oh, okay, that sounds good. And sure enough, we had three different sessions and I did learn a lot. And at the end, uh, she said, well, you don't have a Facebook pixel on your website. Yes, I do. She goes, oh yeah, 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 you do. She says, but it's not hooked up to your ads. And I said, well, can you do that for me? And she's like, no, you have to do it. And then um, I'm like, well, okay, I, I don't know how to do that. And then she's like, okay, I'll send you some information on how to do it. <sighs> Y'all, they sent me this long article. And then she calls me and says, well, the article we sent you is not right, so don't try to do that. And I'm like, okay, y'all are Facebook. Uh, uh, you know, hey, what the heck? If y'all don't know, who knows? So what that taught me, y'all, was there's a lot of I don't knows going around. You work for Facebook and you can't figure out how to get my pixel hooked up to my ad. Okay. So it's not just me, y'all. I do know there's a lot of changes going on, so I guess that's it. Now, as far as these firecrackers, y'all, I'm just gonna put a lot of paint on here. Different colors, obviously I'm sticking with a lot of red, white, and blue. So I think I'll leave all of that white and then I'll come up here and I'll do some of this in red, this top part. And um, the thing about, you know, doing anything July 4th, you can't go wrong with red, white, and blue. So it's kind of hard to screw that up. So if you wanna paint it, you can do whatever colors you want, obviously. But I, I think if you stick with red, white, and blue, no matter what you do, you're not going to mess it up. That's kind of my thought about it. So I'm going to do these firecrackers. I'm just going to lay down red right now because that's what I've got on my brush. And I'm going to put that red everywhere I think I might want it. Just here, there. And then I'm going to come back in a little bit 
and I'm going to do um, blue. And then I'm gonna leave some of this white and therefore that's how you're gonna get that red, white, and blue. So I hope you guys are doing good. It's Sunday, y'all. I can tell the heat is already starting. It's not raining, so I'm glad for that. But I can tell the heat is already starting to, the humidity is what I'm noticing. It's like, oh yeah, summertime is here. Summertime is coming, y'all. And y'all know if we're in this part of the world what that means. It ain't good. It's lots and lots of heat and humidity. But I guess a lot of everybody will be at the beach because that's one thing we do to cool off around here. And um, I think since the world seems to have opened back up, everybody's just running up down the street because everywhere I go, there's lots of people. Y'all, this red is getting a little gummy on me. So I keep kind of hitting it. So what I'm doing is I'm just looking at my firecrackers and I'm just putting red about my goal is on all my firecrackers to have about a third of it red, a third of it blue, and a third of it white. And it doesn't really matter, you know, um, which is red and which is white. What really matters is just that you get it, get it on there. And so I'm just kind of looking at it and deciding, okay, like I don't have any red right here. Okay, well, let's just put some red right here. And I, obviously I try to put the red where it's not close to another red. Not always possible, but you know, we do what we can. And then I'll pick up my blue here in just a little bit and I'll start putting blue everywhere too. And uh, then I'll have my white and that's how I'll do that red, white, and blue. So, yeah. Tell me what you guys are doing. It's a Sunday. I think a lot of people veg out on Sunday evenings or afternoons. Maybe they go to church in the morning, but kind of veg out in the afternoon. So, it's always kind of a, I don't know, y'all, I, I don't know what it is about Sundays sometimes, but it's like some days, some Sundays, I guess, like, I get a lot of stuff done, and other Sundays, I just kind of, like, veg. Sometimes you just need that, you know. All right, I think I'm going to put a stripe down here, and then I'm going to pick up, let me see if I want any red over there. May have to put some red on my gnome, y'all. This piece is kind of long. So when you look at, like there so far is my, my wheelbarrow, right? And then over here is gonna be, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make the hat. I've been using this, um, I was using that script liner, but this hat, I've got a lot of area to cover. I'm gonna pour that red out like that. And I'm gonna put a lot of paint on here on my brush, just kind of go back and forth. Because you know, when you're trying to get that red to cover white, it's not necessarily the easiest thing to do. So you have to put a lot of paint on there to get your red to, to cover that white. So I'm gonna give it my red hat, like so. Like this. I guess this is the second full week, maybe, first or second, I don't know, that the kids are out of school. So my granddaughter, she came over this afternoon because of course she doesn't have to go to school this summer. So she'll be hanging out with us. And um, it's always kind of nice. I think the thing that people like about the summer is you don't feel like you're just tied to a schedule every single second of every single day like you do when school's in. Because when school's in, you just kind of have to do what you got to do. All right, so I'm looking. This is his beard. Of course, this would be flesh. Since I gave him a red hat, I'm going to leave that white and that white. And then I'm going to make this blue. This is all the white area between him and the wheelbarrow. So I'm going to leave that. So since he's going to have a blue gown, I'll put some red stripes right here. Like this on his gown and then I'm gonna make the, the, the rest of the gown blue. Now we have about three or, I don't know, four blues maybe in our palette, and I'm gonna actually put two blues on this. One is the medium blue, and then I have the brilliant blue. So I'm gonna put, I think I'm gonna use the medium blue <clears throat> on here, on his uh, gown, I guess you could call it. All right, so we got that. Let me put some you can see I just put a lot of paint on there and I go back and forth, up and down and back and forth. 
because I get a lot of paint on there. So I gotta be careful. This is his hair, y'all. I'm having to look at this. That's all of his hair. Okay. Let's come up here. I think this is his gown. Right up to there. And then what I'll do is I'll come back later and I will shade this in a brilliant blue and then I will outline it in the navy blue and that'll make it look really pretty. And down here is the bottom of his gown. So I guess I'll go ahead and do that as well. Make that all blue and then I'll come back and shade that real good. I'm gonna put probably gray or maybe scarecrow white on his, his shoes. Okay, this is all his beard. That's the inside of his little thing of his gown. So let's go like that. All right. Now, if those of you that want to cut your own blanks, we do have this template. It's ready to go. We have some of you who want to cut your own blanks. So we do have the template for sale on this one. Debbie, I don't know why it won't let you share. That's kind of weird. Tomorrow, I'm kind of resetting up my... Uh, my painting room in here and I'm gonna start with my laptop I'm gonna see I'm gonna start going live with my laptop right over here on the right hand side of me to see if I can get some more share options and other options uh, on there I don't know if that's gonna help at all but it's really the only thing I know to try okay I'm gonna pick up my script liner and because I've got a little area here I'm gonna do this. I've got some flesh, and this is a script liner, what I normally outline and highlight with, but sometimes I use it to base coat small areas like his nose right here, to put some flesh on there, and then he's got a little hand right here. And then of course his beard is gonna stay white. I am gonna shade that, y'all, his beard. I might even do that right now. Let's see. That's gonna stay white. That's white. Now this is part of his face right here, so I believe that stays. That's gotta have some flesh on it, y'all. It's like his cheek, if you will. Okay. And then I've got shoes to do and firecrackers. All right, let's go over here. Let me turn this thing around so you can see all my firecrackers here. Are you in the painters in the making? I thought I was, Debbie. Um, let me see if I can find something, y'all. Let me see if I can do something here. No, let's see. It's not, see, it's not letting me do anything. More ways to go live. Nope, that's not what I want. That's not it, that's not it. See, I don't know. I meant to go in the painters in the making. Um, who knows? Because usually painters in the making you can share to uh, Painters Club. We still have a lot of people on the Painters Club page. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I got my Brilliant Blue. And just like I said earlier, okay, hold on a minute. I'm gonna just come in here, and what is my goal? My goal is just to put some blue paint where I think it would look good, knowing red, white, and blue is my theme. And typically I always paint the sides, usually in the same color, not always. But I like this, I'm gonna leave this white, red, white, blue. That's for that firecracker. And this firecracker is, you've got three lines and the medium, uh, the red is the middle line. So I'm gonna make the two lines of this firecracker blue. And like I said, don't worry about it. You cannot go wrong on red, white, and blue. And pretty much no matter what you do, you're gonna be okay. And then I'm gonna do some blue here. Like so. I'm gonna leave that red and white. Then I'm going to do some blue in here. And I'll do some blue right here. I'll probably put some blue in here. And you can tell this base coat, I have a lot of paint on here. You, you're in the club, not painters in the making. Okay. What the heck? What do I know? 
If Debbie says I'm in the painter's club, I'm in the painter's club then. There we go. That was not my intention, but that's all right. Since when is life ever perfect? I'll do this right here in blue. So when you're doing firecrackers, I just think the name of the game is trying to make it colorful. And I'm gonna do that, I think. And you can tell I'm not, when I come back on here, I don't know if it'll be tonight. I'm gonna to try to do it tonight so I can finish this today. Cause I got a lot of, we got a lot, a lot of lives this week, y'all. I'm gonna to have to do a lot of outlining on this. And um, I'll probably do it in the navy blue, that dark blue, which is almost like a black color. I won't do any shading on this, y'all, because this area is so small. If I start shading all of this, it just turns really, really gumpy and gooey. And I don't like that. I want this to be bright and crisp and colorful. And you can see I'm just coming in here, and here I'm just putting blue where I think it might look good. And then of course I've got a lot of white left too. Now this is not gonna look good until I outline it with that navy blue. That's when it's gonna look good, y'all. So let's come down here. I'm putting some paint on here. Tonight when I come back on, Debbie, I'll make sure and try to go in the uh, painters in the making. For those of y'all that don't know, painters in the making is a page that we started not too long ago, simply because if we didn't, it was, we were in a group on the Painters Club as a group, which is, there's nothing wrong with a group. It's just that there's a lot of limitations that Facebook puts on a group that they don't put on a page. And y'all, we didn't know that last year when we started. And we kind of started last year really just not knowing what we were doing. I hate to say it sound dumb, but y'all it is oh look it is what it is so we have learned a lot hey kathy how are you i'm glad you're hanging out so i am painting i'm going to show y'all this just give you a little thing this is our wheelbarrow full of firecrackers okay i'm just face coating it right now and then this is the little known guy that's pushing it and we do have these we have this blank available miss victoria actually made the uh template for us and the template is available. Y'all, I have done, I, I have to say, I feel like I've been chained to my desk for about two weeks, more than I normally would be, which sometimes has been a lot. Because this year I decided, and my brilliant mind wondered why I didn't get a notification of me being live. That's why then, because I went, I went live on the wrong page, Debbie. Sorry. And um, in my brilliant mind, I decided this last year, that in January of 2021, I was gonna get my act together and all the library of templates that we have, which are a lot, I don't know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands, I was gonna you know, put those on the website for those that wanted to just buy their template and not have to buy a blank from us because a lot of people Maybe they don't want to spend money on the blank or maybe they live out of town and they want to cut their own blank because they don't want to spend money on the shipping either. So I thought, you know, okay, I'm going to get my act together and I'm going to get that done. And y'all, I think I have it done, but let me tell you, it was crazy. Well, the first thing I had to do was load probably 10 years of pictures onto the computer because I still had a lot of photos. Um, I mean, they were in albums, you know, they were in photo albums, but they were not on, they weren't digitized. So that took me a while. Finally got all the photos in the computer. Then I had to organize the photos like in Christmas, you've got reindeer, Santas, trees and lamps, canes, you got signage, you got silhouettes, you got uh, snowman, Texas theme. So then I had to organize everything into a certain section. Finally got all the photos organized. That took me, I probably didn't finish all that till February. Then I had to go find what we call the DXF or the actual digital file for each of the um, templates. Y'all, finally got that done. Then I had to create the templates like we sell templates, but I saw, so the people in CNC's, they, they want a template that's a DXF. The people who um, 
maybe are using an overhead projector and making their own blanks, they want templates that are either JPEGs or PDFs. And um, then we've got some people who want SVG. So every single file that we sell, every single template that we sell has to have uh, all of that. It has to have a DXF, a PDF, a JPEG, and an SVG. So every file has to be converted. And then all those files have to be put in together uh, in what's called a zip file. And then once you get the zip file done, then you've got to upload all of that. Hold on, I'm looking for the right brush. Then you have to upload the zip load file. Oh my gosh, y'all, it's about to go crazy. And you do that for every file. I mean, the good news is, is once it's done, it's done. Y'all, but the bad news is it took me forever. And I actually thought that, um, you know, I thought, oh, you know what? I'm gonna knock this out real quick, like, <laughs> uh, joke's on me. It took me months. I just finished this last week. And uh, y'all, when I finished the last file, I was like standing in my office going, yay, yay. I was doing like the happy dance. Bruce comes running in there. What's going on? I was like, I finished, I finished. And he knew what I've been doing. He's like, you kidding me? It's like, no. But now I can honestly say I found all kinds of photos of stuff that I, I truly forgot that we ever did. You know, it's kind of like when you decide to clean out your closet that day, for whatever reason, the mood hits you or whatever, you decide to clean out your kitchen cabinet or whatever it is you're doing, then, you know, you, you decide to do that and you're like, oh, and halfway through, of course, you're like, what the heck have I got myself into? What am I doing? Am I cuckoo? And, uh, but the good news is I found all kinds of patterns that I had, I had totally forgotten about. And so we have a lot of templates now for those that want to. And like I said, now that that's done, once it's done, it's done. That's the good part. But y'all, it nearly drove me crazy. And I think a lot of it was all the decision making that you have to do too. You have to do it, you know, when you're cleaning out your closet, right? Do I keep these shoes? Do I throw them away? You know, all that kind of stuff. What do I do? Okay, so I'm going to, for purposes of this video, I'm gonna take the navy blue, y'all, right here. And I'm going to do this. Even though this paint is still really wet, it's okay, I can get away with it. I'm gonna go ahead and do the outlining on here just because there's a lot of work that needs to be done. And um, so when I finished all the templates and I got them all loaded onto the website, I was all jumping around for joy and Bruce comes running in there like, what the hell's wrong with you? Oh, I'm sorry, what's wrong with you? And um, he's like, I said, I finished, I finished, I finished. Cause every morning he'd get up, I'd be chained to my desk in there. And in my office, my office is nothing other than a spare bedroom that we converted. Last year I went to uh, Ace Pearland Lumber here in town and I had him come out and measure and we threw the bed out, threw everything out of that bedroom. And I had them measure and make me cabinets, but it's a small, small bedroom because I live in an older house, so all the bedrooms are pretty little. That's what my office is. And um, so, I, but it's nice to have an office, you know, so I'm really grateful for that. So you can tell I'm just kind of coming in here. Now, there's some of this outlining I can't do right now because this stuff is so wet. But a little bit of outlining is gonna make this look really good. And of course, without the outlining, it's, it's not gonna look good. And the, the secret is, is to get a lot of water in that paint to make that paint recess. And of course, I put a little bit more pressure down trying to recess into the CNC lines and cover those lines. So the fact that I got all those files done, yippee, 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 yippee. And I have to say, y'all, they're totally organized now into folders on my computer. And uh, probably a couple years ago, I had a company come in and I paid them to put in my own little server and they save all my files. You know, every basically almost every keystroke it gets saved because I've got thousands of files. And if anything were to happen to those files, y'all would have to come see me in the funny farm because I would lose it. 
So at least I have all that done. And I, you know, it's kind of like after you clean out your closet or you clean your kitchen or whatever, you just kind of feel like, oh, awesome. Kids can't come back home now. You got it. You got it. Hey, uh, we have one spare bedroom and it's got one bed in it, but uh, that's all we have. And really, I go in there and sleep when I can't, because I unfortunately for years have suffered from insomnia. Some nights it's better than others, of course. But if I can't sleep, I go to the spare bedroom and I just go down and watch TV. Because a lot of times if I'll turn the TV on, it'll kind of lull me back into sleep. And um, so when we made that bedroom, when we remodeled that bedroom several years back, I made sure and made my guest bedroom basically exactly how I wanted it. And I have to say it turned out really good. We uh, we ripped out the sheetrock because I, like I said, I live in an older house, so there was, we needed plugs everywhere. Like my house was built in 1964, y'all. So you can imagine the closet space I don't have. And you can imagine the electrical outlets we don't have. And nowadays with everybody's electronics, it's like, that's not gonna fly, you know? So um, we ripped out the sheetrock in that spare bedroom and had a, a good friend of ours we've known for years, he's a good electrician, he came over and he rewired that whole bedroom, put in lamps and all that kind of stuff, hanging lamps from the ceiling. Uh, what do you call it? A ceiling fan and all that. But mainly what I like is that he put in tons of electrical outlets all around each wall. So cell phones, laptops, um, TVs, you know, any of that stuff. We're good to go. So when I made that spare bedroom, I made it for what I wanted. And I have to say, I really, I, uh, sometimes I go in there at night and I really do go back to sleep. I have it set up the way I want. Y'all can see I'm really kind of having to work this brush and uh, cover up those CNC lines, but I'm working it, y'all. But look at what the definition has now started just from the little bit of, and I'm not through, and I can't finish until this really, really dries, but I can put enough on here. Um, my network stinks tonight. Catch you later. Okay, Kathy, that sounds good. Thanks for joining us, babe. And, um, and I've had a lot of network issues late, or uh, what do you call it, Wi-Fi issues. And um, I hate to call the people, what do you call those people? Like the cable people or whatever? Because mm. they keep you on the phone forever. All right, y'all. I'm going to call this a success. I'm going to let it dry. Debbie, I'm going to try to come back on tonight in the Painters Club. I'm sorry, Painters in the Making, not the Painters Club painters in the making and finish this so y'all can see what it looks like we had a several ladies ask are we all gonna do a live on that so we'll make sure we do it yeah we'll do it and I'm putting a lot of paint down in there but I'm gonna let this dry now y'all know tomorrow Ashley and I are having a, a little friendly jigsaw competition tomorrow morning so y'all join me Y'all root for me because, you know, I'm the old person, so I deserve the most support. And all we're doing is just going to have a little fun with it and um, showing folks that you don't necessarily have to do what we do as far as CNC's. That's not realistic. You know, most people are not going to have that. And showing folks that you can cut out a lot of yard art using a jigsaw. We did that for years. And um, so don't feel like you have to buy stuff for much. You don't, I mean, it, obviously we like it if you do, but if you want to make your own yard art, you can certainly do that with a jigsaw. It doesn't take that, it takes some patience, but that's really, and time, you know, like anything else. Typically when you pay people to do something, part, a lot of what you're paying is the time that it takes them to do it, you know, and the skill level if they have any, you know, if it's certain things. But, uh, so she and I are going to be jigsawing tomorrow morning. Y'all join us. We'll be on uh, Painters in the Making. We'll see uh, if I can manage to go to the right place. <laughs> and uh, I'll try to come back on later tonight, y'all. Y'all can join me if you don't have anything else to do. Uh, I know, I think it's going to be really pretty, Rhonda. I, let me show you what I've got now. And, of course, I'm not near done. And all I did was just put the red and the blue wherever I wanted it. I didn't... 
I didn't try to like, I don't know, be real precise about it. I just stuck red and blue on there wherever I wanted it and made, making sure that I left some white. Now after this is dry, I'll be coming on probably tonight, I'm gonna highlight a lot of this with white. So by the time I get those white highlights, and then I'm also going to do a lot of shading on this guy. He's still got a lot of work to do, but you can tell I got a lot of paint on him. So y'all check me out in a little while and uh, Y'all check me and Ashley out in the morning. We'll be on Painters in the Making, having our jigsaw competition. I'll see y'all in a bit. Bye-bye. Hey, everybody. It's Mary at Yard Art Us. I'm back. I was here a little bit earlier. Hopefully, I made it on the right page today, Painters in the Making. And hopefully, my friend Debbie's going to share for me because somehow I've managed to get myself in Facebook jail and I can't share anymore. <laughs> All I know is jail's a place you don't want to go, but unfortunately, I seem to be there. Hey, Debbie, how are you? So, uh, Debbie, I think I went in the right group today, or just now, painters in the making. If you could share, if you have a button. If you do, you do. I guess if you don't, you don't. But I came on and wanted to finish the little known wheel, firecracker wheelbarrow guy. And I actually had to put him under the hair dryer just a little bit just to, so I could get back on tonight because I have a lot of paint on this guy. But I'm using the brilliant blue right here on top of this medium blue. And I'm just going to shade him for a little bit. And uh, remember, shading is just something you can practice at. You don't have to shade yard art. I always do. That's just what I've always done because I kind of like that look. But it's not something you have to do. And I just take a, a flat tip brush like this and just dip it in here, kind of like on the corner, like, like that. And then I just kind of go wherever I think I want some color. Now in my case, I'm kind of just, I did this little guy's uh, gown, if you will, in a medium blue. So I'm going to, you'll see in just a minute, I'm shading in the brilliant blue, but I'm gonna come back here and I'm going to outline in a dark navy blue. And so it's gonna be a very, very tiered blue look. In other words, there's gonna be a lot of blue on this thing before I'm finished. But I think it'll look really good. So I've got some of the blue here, like this, and I'm gonna do like this, like that. And then of course I shade it in a uh, light blue up here. Now, what I'm gonna do while um, I was doing the hair dryer, I, this is red, and then I put the shading red and I did the white stars. I kind of wanted to do that so y'all could see what this is going to look like. Now, before I wrap this up on this, I'm going to just put a little bit of shading on his hand and just a little bit on his nose. I don't want a whole lot, so I'm just going to do a little bit and then I'm fixing to start over here. I'm going to start with the navy and we're going to outline this guy. Okay. So I'm going to pick this up. This is my script liner. And I'm going to pick up some navy blue, which is the dark blue, which is this. Have a question on shading. If you only use the tip of the brush, why not use the smaller brushes? Uh, you know, Debbie, I think a lot of it, you could, you could uh, play with that. I've always used the bigger brushes, not bigger. I've always used brushes the size that I use. Like the one I just put down is a number 12, okay? So that's a number 12, right? Because I always feel like if I use a little brush and I have it all full, then I get a hard line over here. So if you use a bigger brush and you make that paint stop in the middle of the brush, you get more of a graduation of color than a hard line. And I'm not trying to get a real hard line. Maybe, I hope that helps. Hey, Kitty. Hey, Ed, how are y'all doing? I'm working on finishing the little known firecracker wheelbarrow guy. And uh, I came on earlier today and I base coated him and I put a lot of paint on him. And so I wanted to come on tonight and just do some shading and highlighting and outlining to finish this guy. Cause it's kind of getting to the point where it's like already June the, what, 5th, June the 5th or 6th. So trying to get this guy because y'all, uh, the 4th of July is gonna be here before we know it. Now I have quite a bit of paint in this brush and I'm trying to make sure I go down into that CNC line and put a lot of paint in there. That's all I'm doing. And then I'm gonna kinda come up here and just take my brush strokes 
You don't have to have them in any certain way. Just whatever you think looks good. But you can tell I've already started to really just put some definition on this guy just by outlining him. That's all I've done right now. And if you will outline and make sure you, you know, you do that. And if you choose to shade and, you, and you're going to have a really pretty, um, pretty looking piece of yard art, I think. So uh, when I get to this blue gown, you'll see I'm going to have a lot of blue. I started with the medium blue on my base coat. I shaded it with the brilliant blue. And I'm using the navy blue to outline it. And by the time I do that, I'm gonna have a lot of blue on here, but that's really what I wanted. Doing it like so. I've got people over here laughing, y'all. They're what? They're playing Uno and they're trying to be quiet. And I have to say, they're not being very quiet, but they're having a good time, so that's all that matters. Playing Uno on a Sunday evening. That would be my granddaughter and my sister. And they're just as silly as they can be, y'all. <laughs> and I think they think we can't hear them. But, you know, hey, I'd rather hear them laughing than crying, that's for sure. Laughter's good, good for the soul. So I'm just kind of making some streaks down over here with this navy blue brush, or uh, script liner is what I got in my hand. Now, sometimes people, uh, I see, I'm in some other groups, and they'll, they'll be discussing using... Um, Pasha pens to outline. I, I don't I don't do that mainly because I can't afford that. I use a lot of paint and using those pens, people say it's faster. So if that works for you, the only thing I, I I've heard a lot of people complain about those pens that when they put poly on them, the pens run. I don't know, y'all. I've never used them. Uh, I've just always used you know outdoor paint is what I use. So uh, I, don't, I don't know about using a pen. It might be easier, but I don't know if it's gonna be friendlier to the outdoor environment. Because some of those people that are using those pens are using them on door hangers that are never really gonna be outside the way a piece of yard art's gonna be. So I'm just kind of coming in here, and you can tell I used a solid brilliant blue on my shoes of this little guy. And then I'm just outlining him in navy. And I'm coming up in here and just putting paint wherever I think. Uh, uh, well, Nella, you think they do run? See, that's kind of what I was thinking. It's either they're going to, the, what would worry me is when you hit the poly with that, that the ink on your, your marker, you know, is just going to run everywhere on your yard art piece. Um, and then if you don't poly them and you don't put a top coat on, then my worry would be when it starts raining, is it going to run? So I'm glad you said that. I kind of, that was kind of my thought. But like I said, I've always painted stuff that I, I just didn't ever really think I could afford. A, those, those things are expensive. Whereas you can just get some paint. Yes, you may have to learn how to use the brush, but it'd be a lot cheaper. And y'all, let's face it, things cost too much anyway. Especially nowadays, it seems like it's crazy. So this is just the little bit of time I've been talking to you guys. And you can see what I've gotten so far on my little gnome guy, okay? And uh, Kitty says, yes, they do. Thank y'all for telling me that. So then my suspicions were, were right. Um, I've heard other people say that they do, that they do run. So, but like I said, I've never used them. Years ago, um, my husband would use them every now and again and um, on different projects. And my mother-in-law came in and was watching him and she, she was an artist and uh, she's passed away now, but she she kind of had a little fit and basically threw his pens out the door and said, no, you're going to learn to use a brush. So, you know, when your mother-in-law does it, you just do what she says because she's the boss. And so we've always used a brush. I remember at one time the Uniball paint pens, they were like $5, but that was many years ago. So who knows what they cost now. And of course, with our supply chain, the way it is, that's even if you can get them. Because the supply chain, y'all, it ain't looking too good. All right, so I think I've got most all of that. Now, of course, I've got to come back and put a lot of um, white on him, okay? As in highlighting, I mean. 
Oh, one else says, I finished the piece and it bleeds. Oh, some say spray first, but kind of defeats the purpose. Exactly, yeah. And I know that people are using those pins because they haven't, um, you know, just kind of decided that they're gonna use the brush and make and, and spent the time using the brush because it's a learning curve, you know, and I get it. Um, and so, you know, you kind of have to pick your poison, so to speak. Um, I've used a brush for so long and I don't want to do anything else. And y'all know, uh, the other thing people want to sometimes, they'll ask my opinion about poly. You know, what kind of poly do you use? And I think everybody knows what we use by now. But, uh, and then people will want to say, well, I use such and such and there's nothing wrong with using that. And I, I, I'm not going to argue if that's, if that works for you and it's working good for you, then definitely use it. But... If you're not careful, I've used other polys over the years, and there's nothing worse than having a, a really pretty piece that you've spent hours on, like a Santa, and this has happened to me, y'all, and then you go to poly it, and suddenly Santa has a yellow beard. Y'all, nobody wants a Santa with a yellow beard. So if you're not careful, you can end up with stuff, you know, turning yellow. I don't know that all of them do that, but I've had a fair number of them that I've used over the years that did do that. So a lot of times, and then it's kind of like, you know, trying to find something you like and that you can afford and that won't turn things yellow. It can be a little bit of, oh, I don't know, trying, that's the word. <laughs> so I still have this small number 12 brush, y'all. You can see it right like that. I'm gonna wash it out. And uh, I painted this wheelbarrow in a nutmeg. Now nutmeg is something I, Honestly, I use a lot at Thanksgiving, not a lot of times, any other time of the year, but usually at Thanksgiving. But uh, I put some um, shading red in here and I'm fixing to uh, stir this real quick because I wanted it to be a little bit darker. I'm using shading brown and shading red and I'm gonna just kind of mix that. I'm trying to get it a, a real red red, I'm sorry, real brown red, and that way it'll show up against this nutmeg. Cause this nutmeg is awfully dark to begin with. I could have done it in reindeer brown, but I just kind of felt like that was gonna be too light. And all I'm doing is just kind of shading in those areas uh, where I think it, you know, might look good. You don't necessarily have to shade in the areas that I shade in, just I say put some shading on there somewhere and it'll probably be fine. And in little spaces, you don't want to shade too much because then it covers up the entire base coat color. And I think the trick is, is to do some shading without over shading, if that makes any sense. So I'm coming down here, then I'm gonna come over here, and then I'm gonna come down here. Now, I could, I'm just gonna put a little bit in here. I'm not really shading, I've just got that brush, and I'm just kind of making some brush brush strokes there all right so i've got this little guy and i'm going to kind of pretend that this is made out of a piece of wood and i'm just going to kind of do it this way and i'm just kind of eyeballing it it's a wooden wheel part it is not you know it doesn't have to be perfect or anything like that and then I would probably do that. And then I'm gonna take this and just kind of hit it with some brush strokes. Not trying to make it perfect, just putting some paint on there, if you will. See a little bit of area here, and then I can come back with my script liner and do this in a uh, shading red, and I'll have a really good looking cart. Now I have the letters USA, even though that yellow is still really wet, I'm going to go ahead and um, try to make this work. Uh, I'm a fan, y'all, of yellow and red. Both of them are bright colors. Both of them are warm colors. Uh, you'll see in a lot of things that I do, I use them together. But um, it's not always easy trying to get this red to cover over that yellow. So I may have to come back in the morning and do it again. Now you don't, you could also do this in white, you know, but I just think the white is not gonna show up as much on that yellow background. So I'm gonna do this, I got my U, 
And it's got a little bit of tail up here, y'all. There we go. And then I'm gonna put a little bit of a tail right here on that S and right here on the S. And then it's just a matter of filling it in. This won't be dry till tomorrow, and I will come in here and put some white highlights on USA. I can't do that right now because I've got too much wetness going on. But I really have always kind of been a fan of the yellow and red and um, because they're both bright colors. And I think they look good together. Putting a tail on kind of, when I say tail on these letters, all I'm saying is I'm putting a little bit of a dash on the letter. That's all I mean. Here we go. And tomorrow I'll probably come in here and do something with some white. Now, I also have <clears throat> little bitty stars down here. I'm gonna try to do my best to make those stars look good, but they're kind of small. And I'm gonna do them in blue. Hey, Cindy, how are you? I'm so glad you're here. I am going to use some Brilliant Blue. I've gotta put a little bit of water in this, y'all. And um, I'm going to make these stars down here in blue. I thought about making them in white, but I don't think I'm going to like the white up against the yellow because there's not enough contrast. And then the other thing I think about yard art, and I don't know, I guess it's just a matter of personal preference, is I tend to make everything, hey Tammy, how are you? I tend to make everything really bright uh, because I feel like, you know, yard art is something to be seen from afar. And especially if people are driving down the road and stuff like that. You really want your stuff to kind of pop. And so I tend to put a lot of bright colors on things just to kind of show it off, so to speak. And what I do on these stars is normally I just start over here on the tip of the star and work towards the end, inside of the star. And you can tell, I think I'm going to do good, y'all, with the, um, the blue stars. This is very wet right now, so there's not a lot of anything I can do except just put the paint on there and let it dry and come back tomorrow. Now, just start on the tip of the star and kind of work my way back in. My stars are going to be hand-painted. They are not going to be perfect. That's okay. As long as they halfway resemble a star and they don't look too willy wonky, I'm happy. Because a lot of times people will think my work, you know, they'll be very complimentary of my stuff and I'm very grateful for that. And I think they think it's perfect, but y'all, there's something wrong with everything I paint or, you know, I find little things here and there. I don't think anything is perfect. Okay, so I've got my USA in red and I've got my stars in blue. And y'all, I'm a happy camper. Hey, Belinda, how are you? She says, share, good deal, thank you, thank you. Yeah, tomorrow in the morning, Ashley and I are having a little competition. Y'all come find us in the morning, probably about 10 o'clock. Her and I are gonna be doing some jigsawing and uh, we're gonna do it uh, kind of competitively to see who can do it the fastest and the best. Y'all know I'm gonna win because uh, I have that maturity thing working for me. <laughs> I don't know if that's working for me. It could be working against me, y'all. But I'm gonna say it's working for me, okay? I'm gonna say it is. Because if it is, if you say it, then maybe that makes it true. <laughs> y'all, I cracked myself up. All right, so I've got my uh, shading red. I'm gonna say, great, thank you, hope you are. I, I do too, I do too. I got my shading red, and I'm gonna just outline my, my uh, whole cart in that shading red. And again, I'm using my script liner. And I'm just going down in those lines where the CNC, now this is one for those of you that wanna cut your own blank. I definitely have this one in the, um, on the website, the template is for sale if you want to cut your own blank, because we have some folks that want to do that. I was saying earlier today, I was on live earlier, 
talking about, I had no idea how much work it was going to be getting all my templates organized from, my, you know, from only having them for, I don't know how many years. And I did get them all organized. And I would say 90% of them are on the website. Maybe not 100%, but y'all, when you have hundreds of them and hundreds of them, and you, then you have to also find the photos for each one of them. It was crazy talk. And when I got through, I stood up and I was jumping up and down for joy. Bruce comes running in the office like, what's wrong with you? I said, I finally finished the templates, yay! You know, it's kind of like whenever you decide to clean your closet and you actually take the time and do it. It's kind of a good feeling when you get it done. Might not be a good feeling while you're doing it, but you know, you just keep traveling on until you get to that part where you get to the finish line. Okay, y'all, this uh, cart is very dark, but I'm really liking it. Um, thank you, Debbie. She's showing y'all that uh, if you wanna buy the template or we have the blank at the store, but I know some of you guys wanna cut your own blanks. So this template is available. I actually have it on the website because so much of the last year when we were doing lives, we didn't have our templates on the website. We just, we just didn't have time to get them all on there. And, um, and honestly, I went through some of them and I didn't put them on the website because I just didn't think they were that good. So there was a lot of, you know, kind of going through stuff and making decisions about what I thought was worth putting on the website or what I liked or however you want to say it. And so, uh, also we have Christmas in July coming. And so June is very busy for us just getting ready because y'all know we have a lot of stuff coming in July. And, uh, you know, we try to do that. Now we do the sneak peek where you see a piece, the painted piece. In the beginning, when we were doing this, we just did the sneak peek with the, the blank was raw, it wasn't painted. So uh, it's quite an ordeal to get all that done, but it does help on the sneak peek for people to kind of see, you know, what we're gonna do. Hey, Stephanie, how are you? Um, so I got my wheelbarrow here and uh, got my firecrackers, right? So. I'm going to pretend that my little wheel down here is not a, a black rubber wheel. It's just a thing made out of wood. It's a piece of wood. And what I did on here is I just gave it a kind of a nail, like there's a nail in this box, in the middle of it. That's why I painted that gray. Or maybe not a nail, what is the other word, screw. Okay, so I'm gonna go around here with my shading red, and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna go to the top of where I did my shading brown. I'm trying to kind of make it look like, you know, what you might think of a, a piece of wood looking like. And then I'm just kind of going in here and taking that brush and going up and down. Not trying to make it perfect at all, just putting some paint on there. Of course, y'all know I still have to come back with my highlights. Okay. But I think I'm good in that I'm fixing to start highlighting this, but I want y'all to see how this looks. Okay, so it's pretty dark, but it's also pretty. But watch what happens here in just a minute. And it'll take me maybe a minute. And this is where a lot of times, especially when Ashley first started painting, she would paint at her house and she would come to my house and she'd be like, what is wrong with this thing? And so I would have to kind of look at it. And most of the time, all I did was get some white paint out most of the time and did this. And y'all know it doesn't take long. But once you do that, then you kind of get a really pretty look. And some of these tops, I'll do like this. I'll just kind of come in and do that. And then on, on those sides. Now on this, firecracker what I did I chose to do was just do the CNC line with white kind of giving it an outline if you will and then of course on this and you can do this any way you want but it's just about putting some white on there that's really all you're doing and I'm coming in here doing that going here doing that coming up like that and in just a few swipes of paint, I've already got this looking a little bit better. Now, I'm going to leave this part alone probably till tomorrow. I will probably come back and do something on top of those USA letters. And it's just a matter of bringing in some white highlights. Let me show you this. 
be coming over here like so. And I'll come down here like that. And I'll probably do something like that for my the screw right I, that I have right there. Also, I'm gonna come in here, come up like that. And the cool thing is, is you can always come back in here tomorrow after you've done this and uh, it's like anything else, you may decide to put a few more brush strokes on there. I'm gonna go in here and on this guy, I'm just gonna put some white down here on his hat. And basically, where do I put the white? I put the white wherever there's a lot of base coat color showing through, or there's some base coat color showing through. Put it to you that way. Put a little bit more white paint there. There. And I'm done, y'all. Let me show y'all. Let me turn this guy around. Okay, so what I did is I base coated this whole thing in white. It does, it makes a big difference, Debbie. When you put, I showed y'all a while ago how dark everything was. But just look at how bright. It's just kind of brightened it up. And notice my brush strokes on highlighting, they're not perfect. They're not every brush stroke is the same diameter or the same length or anything like that. They're, sometimes my brush strokes, I think, get kind of messy, y'all. But you get the idea. And then look at this guy. He's got a lot of blue on him, but I also put a lot of white on him. So I started with the whole thing with white on this. And then, I painted his in medium blue, shaded in brilliant, outlined it in navy blue. This is num uh, number 20 red with white stars and some shading red. Now my, my wheelbarrow is nutmeg, which is a dark color. You could do it in reindeer brown. I did it in nutmeg because I did want it to be dark. And then of course this is light yellow with shading yellow and you've got red and blue and that's it. So hopefully if you guys want that, we have some at the store, they are in stock. And we also have the template available. I'm gonna show you kind of like that. And y'all come join us tomorrow. Ashley and I, I think we're gonna cut out a cross and some flowers. Each one of us has got a cross to cut out, something simple. And then we also are gonna cut out some flowers, which are a little bit harder to cut out. I think we're gonna do that about 10 o'clock in the morning. So we'll see y'all then. I hope y'all have a good one and uh, happy Sunday evening. Bye-bye.